Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. A few months ago I did a video where I explained how Nvidia's G-Sync technology works, what you need to take care of to get the most out of it, and I showed you the results of my button to pixel delay tests which did prove that unlike V-Sync and FastSync, G-Sync does not increase the input lag. You can find the link to that video in the description down below. A question that many of you asked was if the test results also apply to G-Sync laptops because these do not have that special G-Sync module since the display is connected directly to the main board and so the GPU. So for the last 3 weeks I have now been testing two demo units provided by ASUS to not only answer the question how G-Sync affects the delay on laptops but also if the IPS panels used in these gaming laptops have a negative impact on the delay as IPS panels are known to have more delay than TN panels. So the GL502VS has a 15.6 inch IPS panel which supports G-Sync and has a maximum display refresh rate of 60Hz at 1080p. It has a Core i7-6700HQ CPU, 16GB of DDR4 memory and the Nvidia GTX 1070 with 8GB of GDDR5 memory. The second demo unit is a GL702VM, which has a 17.3 inch IPS panel where this specific model supports G-Sync and a maximum display refresh rate of 75Hz at 1080p. It comes with the same Core i7 processor as the GL502VS, but instead of a GTX 1070, this model has a GTX 1060 with 6GB of GDDR5 memory. Now let's have a look at the NVIDIA control panel. Under monitor technology you should always see G-Sync, which is the default when a compatible display is detected. Another important setting is Vertical Sync or V-Sync, because even when you have a G-Sync display, then this does not mean that it is always active. G-Sync will prevent tearing by changing the display's refresh rate to match the frame rate. So if the display has a maximum refresh rate of 60Hz, then your frame rate must be less than 60 because when the game runs at 90 FPS, then how should G-Sync change the display refresh rate to 90Hz when it only supports 60Hz? That simply does not work. So to ensure that G-Sync is always active, you must limit your frame rate so that it always stays below the maximum display's refresh rate. A rule of thumb is that you should set the limit to at least 2 FPS less than the display's refresh rate, like 142 FPS for a 144Hz display. However, I will tell you in a minute why this ended badly when I tried it with these laptops. Now back to the V-Sync setting. Here you can select use 3D application setting, which means that it will use the setting that you select inside of the video options of the game. So if you enable V-Sync inside of the game and not limit your frame rate to less than the display's refresh rate, then V-Sync will take over and G-Sync will not be active once your graphics card can produce a frame rate that at least matches your display's refresh rate. There are sadly many people out there who spend extra money on G-Sync support and think that it's active, while they actually play with V-Sync because they did not limit the frame rate to stay below the display's refresh rate. The next value that we can choose is off, which will force V-Sync to be off no matter what you select inside of the game. So if you set it to no and also not limit your frame rate, then it can go past your display's refresh rate, which also disables G-Sync and you get tearing as a result. The next value is on, which will force VSync to be on no matter what you select inside of the game. But as you know now, this means that VSync will take over if you do not limit your frame rate to less than the display's refresh rate. And the last option that we got here is fast sync, which is a VSync alternative. In the description down below you can find a link to a video where I explain in detail how fast sync works and why I was not happy with its performance. I have retested it again on both laptops and I sadly saw the same delay increase, the same FPS drop, as well as the occasional stutter as in my original test, so I still cannot recommend to use FastSync as a V-Sync replacement. But that does not really matter because when you got the G-Sync display, then you really don't want to use anything else. Now according to Nvidia, the default value for vertical sync should be used to 3D application setting. However, on the GL502VS the default is on for some reason, which means that no matter what you select inside the video options of the game, V-Sync will take over once your graphics card can produce a frame rate that at least matches your display's refresh rate. So in case that you use a G-Sync display, you should make sure that this is either set to use the 3D application setting or off, as G-Sync does not require V-Sync to be enabled. You only need to limit your frame rate so that it stays below the display's refresh rate. 
Now let's talk about the delay. To test it, I use a high-speed camera, a gaming monitor, as well as the laptop displays in this case, and the mouse which has a LED connected directly to its left mouse button, which will light up when I press it. Inside of Overwatch, I map the move left action to the left mouse button, so that my character will move to the left when I press it. So for every test case, I repeated this test 20 times. And to get the delay results, I had to review the recorded high-speed footage, where I looked for the frame where the LED lights up, and then I counted the frames until the monitor showed me the action triggered by that input. This then allowed me to calculate the delay between the button and the pixel. Now, to ensure that G-Sync is always active, we need to limit the frame rate to stay below the display's refresh rate. And as I mentioned earlier, a rule of thumb is that you set the FPS cap to two frames below the display's refresh rate. For the GL502VS, this means 58 FPS since the display runs at 60 Hz and 73 FPS for the GL702VM and its 75 Hz display. But when I did that, then I didn't only measure delays that were as high as with VSync. The games also felt very odd as they constantly slowed down and then speeded up again. There also was occasional tearing happening in the lower section of the display. Eventually I found out that the FPS limit of 58 FPS at 60 Hz and 73 FPS at 75 Hz caused that G-Sync constantly turned off and on again, which created all those issues. So I had to go with 56 FPS on the GL502VS and 70 FPS on the GL702VM to make sure that G-Sync was active at all times. This means that if you have a G-Sync display and encounter issues like tearing in the lower section of the screen or this weird effect where the game slows down and then speeds up again, then you should try to lower your FPS limit and see if that helps. Now, we want to know if the IPS panels cause more delay than the TN panels used in most gaming monitors and if enabling G-Sync on the laptop causes a delay increase. So to get some reference data, I took my ASUS PG248Q monitor, which uses a TN panel, and connected it to the display port of the GL502VS. In the first test, I then set the display's refresh rate to 60Hz, disabled both G-Sync and V-Sync inside the NVIDIA control panel, and set the FPS limit to 56 inside of Overwatch. After 20 tests, I then got an average button to pixel delay of 49.17 milliseconds. In the next test, I then just enabled G-Sync inside the NVIDIA control panel, which eliminated the tearing while not affecting the average delay. Then I also set V-Sync to on inside the NVIDIA control panel, which forces V-Sync to be on no matter what you select inside of the game. But this did not change the average delay because the frame rate was limited to 56, and so V-Sync did not take over and G-Sync was still active. When I then set the FPS limit to 300, while G-Sync was on and V-Sync was set to forced on, then the frame rate got locked to 60, which is why some people falsely believe that the driver limits the frame rate to ensure that G-Sync is active, while it's actually V-Sync that now took over, which results in a massive delay increase. This is why it's so important that you limit your frame rate to less than the display's refresh rate when you have a G-Sync display. So these are the results when I connect my monitor to the GL502VS laptop. Now let's take a look at the results from its IPS panel. With both G-Sync and V-Sync disabled and at 56 FPS, I measured an average delay of 47.44 milliseconds. That is less than what we got with the PG248Q, which uses a TN panel. So it turns out that you don't have to worry that the IPS panel in these laptops causes a delay increase. However, you cannot apply this result to all IPS panels and most certainly not to all IPS monitors. When I then enabled G-Sync, then the average delay increased slightly by about 3 milliseconds. This means that while G-Sync does not increase the delay when you use a gaming monitor, there is a small delay increase on the laptop. However, compared to the G-Sync monitor, the delay is just about 1 millisecond higher, so you won't notice that. The result from the test where V-Sync was active is also quite interesting, because even though this also increased the delay quite dramatically, it was still lower than what I measured with the gaming monitor. Then I repeated the same set of tests with the GL702VM, where its IPS panel grants at a refresh rate of 75Hz. These tests produced similar results with delays that are about 3 milliseconds lower due to the higher refresh rate and the higher frame rate. So these are the delays that you get when you use the IPS displays of these laptops. But I thought that you might be interested to see what else is possible with the PG248Q monitor. 
so I connected it back to my PC and did two additional tests with G-Sync enabled. In the first one, where I used its default refresh rate of 144Hz, I measured an average button to pixel delay of 36.72 milliseconds at 140fps. And in the second test, where I used its overclocked 180Hz display refresh rate, I measured an average delay of 35 milliseconds at 176fps. So this shows that more Hertz and more frames per second further decreases the button to pixel delay. But these delays are just one part of the story. What matters just as much as the responsiveness of the game is how smooth it feels. So during the three weeks that I have been working on this test, I have also spent some time playing games on both laptops. And I can say that in terms of how smooth a game feels, I could not notice a difference between playing with V-Sync and playing with G-Sync. This means that limiting your frame rate to less than the display's refresh rate to ensure that G-Sync is always active on these laptops did not harm how smooth the game feels, while compared to V-Sync it did improve the responsiveness by about 48 milliseconds on average. This means that if you own one of these laptops then you should really stay away from V-Sync and make sure that you use G-Sync at all times by limiting your frame rate to less than the display's refresh rate either with the in-game FPS limiter or the River Tuner statistics server in case that the game does not come with the FPS limiter. That said, if you have ever been spoiled by a display refresh rate of 120Hz or more, then you will probably not be happy with 60 or 75Hz displays, especially if you played on a monitor that supported G-Sync at 120Hz or more. So if you plan on buying a laptop to play fast-paced games on it, then I strongly recommend to go for a model that supports a display refresh rate of 120Hz. Now I hope that you enjoyed this delay test of these gaming laptops and if you like this kind of content where I test different technologies and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me on Patreon, the link is in the description below. Also if you don't want to miss my next video then you might want to subscribe to my channel and since many of my subscribers tell me that they frequently miss my videos in their subscription feed, you might also want to click at that small bell icon below this video to get a notification when I upload the next one. If you want to know what I'm currently working on then you can also follow me on Twitter or Facebook, the links are also in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.